show me please do the need to and just okay sir sita on the pitam are you ready yes i started recording yes Hello everyone. Good morning and a very warm welcome from Aquafield. After an overwhelming response of our previous event of two days international webinar on aquatic ecosystem prospect and future challenges, we are very happy to announce that we have arranged a monthly colloquium series. So as you know, this is our second talk in the series, and we will arrange invited talk of international and as well as national renowned speakers. This will be held in each of the following months. So today is the second day of this series, and I will request Dr. Shumit Mondol to introduce our second speaker of this series. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Shumit. So good morning, everyone. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome you all for this monthly colloquium series organized by Medin Ecology Laboratory in association with Aquafilia. So today we are lucky to have with us Dr. Manish Kumar. Assistant Professor, Discipline of Arts Sciences, IIT, Gandhinagar. So his research area encompasses various aspects of hydrology, water chemistry, environmental impact assessment. He has obtained his PhD in environmental engineering from the University of Tokyo, Japan. So he was also a recipient of Monbo Kagar Show Fellowship. So he has many awards and achievements to his credit. Few of them are. He is an executive committee member of the International Water Association India chapter and represent South Asia in IWA Metral Specialist Group. He is associate editor of Groundwater for Sustainable Development, Elsevier Journal and Hydrological Research Letter and also editorial board member for Nature Partner Journals, Clean Water and Springer's Current Pollution Report. So he is a fellow of prestigious Royal Society of Chemistry and he has supervised six PhD theses and contributed more than 100 science citation index journal articles and 50 book chapters and edited six books. He leads the first scientific publication from India on detection of SARS-CoV-2 gene in wastewater in a very reputed journal, Science of the Total Environment. Till date, he has more than 200 research publications in highly reputed journals and has phenomenal 3,000 citations with, with H index of 28 and I-1055. He has been serving as reviewer for many international and national journals. With this brief introduction, I am requesting Dr. Manish Kumar to deliver his talk titled Prevalence of Antibiotic Resistance Virus, Metal, pharmaceuticals and personal care products in India, an emerging challenge for aquatic system. Over to you, Dr. Manish Kumar. Okay, thank you, Sumit. Um, first of all, uh, the thank you for the invitation that, uh, uh, yeah, you just started. And uh, it's like uh, a brother um, introducing his own brother to the, <laughs> uh, the whole village or something like that. So. Uh, yeah, it was uh, nice that uh, we shared uh, or we had experienced uh, one of the best uh, GDP. I think that it was uh, until uh, very <clears throat> recently the second highest GDP country and uh, we have done uh, those things. So today, <clears throat> so thank you very much for the invitation, first of all, and uh, uh, the topic. And uh, I remember that you were not uh, specifically you were telling that uh, see, even if you did the COVID, it's fine. But uh, I want uh, you to talk about uh, whole. Um, so can you see? Uh, yeah. So then, uh, OK. Now what I will do is that uh, uh, you have to talk uh, entirely about uh, the water pollution. And uh, if possible, the, uh, please talk about um okay um so now i will uh, uh and then uh, we reach to the topic that prevalence of antibiotic resistance um virus metals pharmaceuticals and personal care products in india 
Um, yeah, when I was preparing these slides, I realized that maybe I am going to, I have planned to put a lot of stuff uh, in your audience. Uh, still, uh, what I will try to do is that, uh, and because uh, I could have only taken up uh, antibiotic or just virus or metal, uh, but uh, I thought uh, or we decided that uh, let's let uh, the audience know or let the young minds know that what are the challenges that we have and uh, in our uh, fresh water system and uh, then they can choose their uh, interest by themselves. So I would not going to, so what I and Sumit has done is that we didn't uh, force uh, ourselves that let's uh, select the COVID or antibiotic or metal and pharmaceutical and uh, let's uh, bring something and uh, a key um, findings of that I am going to share with you all. Um, sometimes it may become uh, difficult, but you can uh, even uh, stop me and ask or later on, later on question answer session. Any way is fine with me. Uh, take it as a just uh, um, a senior uh, a student presenting his own work. Uh, so it's fine. Um, so now the, let's uh, talk about uh, this is that uh, so when we are talking about the vulnerability of the groundwater system, uh, the many cities in entire world and uh, every all of us, uh, we know that uh, the Johannesburg case uh, that suddenly the city has gone out of the water. And even a rich people, if you, even if you have too much money in your pocket, it is not going to help you. They were in the queue and they were uh, looking for water. And uh, similar thing, um, so this is not a far as yesterday I was talking to one of uh, my colleagues is that COVID is nothing if uh, the no problem at all because suddenly we are moving towards a um, era or towards a point where suddenly the sea water from the cities will go uh, disappear and then uh, it will be a uh, mess. I, I don't know that how we will survive, but at present, uh, as per this 2014 paper, um, the uh, India has uh, the, the three cities uh, already threatened by such uh, condition, and uh, Kolkata is one of the uh, three, one among three. Of course, uh, Bangalore and Chennai are there, and it seems like coastal cities are much more vulnerable, or I don't know, but this is the scenario, and then five, four cities are in the vulnerable. So if we are talking about environmental toxicants uh, in water, uh, you can see that uh, the here at least we, we have defeated the India already, uh, China. <clears throat> so it means uh, that even if the on population wise, we are uh, second one, uh, the, according to 2017 Times of India report, 63, uh, 63 million uh, people in India have do not have access to the safe water, uh, safe water. And uh, what can be the problem? Uh, and there are several. It is not that uh, somebody can do research on agricultural pollutant or inorganic chemicals, organic compounds, sediments, pollutant, disease causing agents, seaways, name it. And it will be there. And if you know that this is 10 top countries, and if you will remove uh, this India and China, the others are uh, like uh, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Congo, so you can understand that uh, we are in the top of the list of the worst. So then uh, that is the uh, situation in India. And it is not that uh, we need to only the urban area needs to worry about. Um, the India's total vulnerability in the natural disaster is that uh, the 57 percent of the land <clears throat> is already vulnerable to earthquake. And this is geology based uh, and maybe human has the little role to play. 68% vulnerable to drought, 12% vulnerable to flood, and 8% vulnerable to cyclones. So every year uh, there is a rain pattern, and uh, like uh, we listen the flood of in Assam or Bihar or the like annual festival like Durga Puja, and you can uh, think that okay now flood has come, it means the uh, Durga Puja is not so far. Uh, but uh, this is an annual event, and um, uh, not much. Uh, if we say that this is only because of the human activities, I am sorry, but I do not buy this one because uh, in uh, Assam, still not much concrete uh, has developed or urban areas has developed, but flooding is there. So, uh, and uh, the ones, uh, 
so these these things we need to understand that we are facing both natural as well as anthropogenic challenges uh, it will be wrong to say that it will be um, only anthropogenic however of course anthropogenic is the reason to can, you can see that 18 million hectare or 20 this becomes 49.8 uh, million hectare which is affected with, from the flood in uh, like 51 years uh, span so this uh, the 51 uh, years uh, the uh, if here we have uh, the 160 percent of the increase of the flooding area so the and the, uh, this is 2011 actually after that there is a kerala flood which was which was unimaginable to have a flood in kerala so in that case you can see that earlier okay uh, this uh, bihar bengal and those places uh, they, they were already prone that okay the, they they will have this one but the flooding has been becoming very very uh, normal uh, new nor uh, the <coughs> normal scenario so and then flooding leads to uh, the waterborne disasters and this can have uh, increased waterborne diseases like typhoid uh, cholera and uh, hepatitis vector borne disease like malaria um, and uh, so this uh, um, of course other than the damage of infrastructure and those things are there and these are the some of the diagram the pictures that shows that how the replacement uh, the displacement effects and then those things are uh, happening so um so and waterborne infection is uh, related to um i mean the casualties or the effect uh, will depend on infectivity of the organism pathogens concentration uh, what is how much amount of fecal contamination is there However, we cannot forget that there is an individual uh, health status also. So individual health status also going to affect uh, our, uh, uh, this, uh, how much in the loss will be happening. And uh, that, is, that has happened in COVID case also, because uh, the, if you are healthy, uh, now uh, the, we are thinking that uh, maybe, um, maybe the covid is uh, more not virus genetics based uh, the thing but uh, present uh, one uh, like uh, the problem with the covid is more uh, depends on that what is the genetics of the patient rather than the genetics of viruses um, if i would say like uh, here i am talking about metal emission but uh, now i am going to introduce the some challenges that we need to face or you, you need to identify that what are the things uh, available there and uh, so the first thing is that we if we suppose that metal this can be anything this this can be anything but uh, there will be sources industrial residential commercial traffic and uh, there will be several pathways of water discharge or atmospheric or solid waste uh, but what uh, flood does and what human does is that this short circuiting and uh, the, it directly goes to the our uh, aquatic system and this is our aquatic system that we are talking about uh, today that uh, how how much they are being affected and like that so these uh, challenges i would say is that uh, related to the source characterization because uh, one type of uh, contaminant uh, adds to the another kind of con contaminants and it will cause the different uh, effect the another point is that ambient water quality is standard. Everybody um, knows <clears throat> that there is a drinking water quality standard. Uh, but I am talking about ambient water quality standards. And uh, if you will see that every, uh, all the country has the different one. And this is uh, in some day, uh, I would like to see uh, talk about that why water quality standards are different. Like in for zinc, a Canadian thinks that 30 mi uh, microgram per liter is fine uh us people thinks that only 12 is fine uh the australia goes up to 50. so what is this why this kind of the variation happens like nickel nickel there is a 470 microgram per liter it's not like us is very much sensitive for uh, zinc uh, the for nickel uh, they allow 470 microliter but canadian says only 150 is enough uh, japan and uh, says that no problem at all i don't care uh, nickel problem so what determines the quality standards and uh, this is the permissible limit that should not that should be permitted in the aquatic bodies and uh, so this depends on 
type of water present in that country. This depends on ligand present in the water. This depends on organic matter present in the uh, places. And in the next slide, I will tell you why. But uh, the, even the guidelines cannot be same. We can borrow a car invented in the US and bring into the India and we can ride it, fine. But uh, the quality standard invented by US cannot be borrowed to India directly. Because uh, we have to have uh, understanding of what type of water we have, how, what kind of organic matter present in there, how much uh, metal if uh, gone to goes to the a deep or bill or uh, some uh, lake or river, how much it can take, uh, or uh, like toxicity will not appear. So you will see that uh, the India has very fine, fine. But actually, this what I have told is because of the just to make a joke that this is about uh, drinking water, not ambient water quality. So in fact, in India, there is no ambient water quality guidelines for metal. They, they have BOD, see the some uh, simple like a steel uh, gross parameter like BOD and pathogens are prescribed. So they don't, don't care pharmaceuticals or metals and those things. And it is not uh, available for human or aquatic life. So if there is a uh, easy means emerging contaminant, and that is what I am saying, or uh, the contaminant of emerging concern, whatever you say. Um, so um, in USA also, they, ha they don't have currently any uh, guideline for that, but they are, in, uh, they are monitoring it, and they have kept some of them in the monitoring list of there. And European Union has in the process of the uh, monitoring, and that of course they have kept something. Canada, India has nothing. So the second challenge is that uh, what should have a guideline revision and implementation? Then I told you that uh, toxicity depends on speciation. It is not that how much uh, metal goes into our body, but it, it is like how much toxicity it causes. And the real toxicity caused by the metal speciation. And I would just in a minute, uh, will let you know that what is metal speciation. So the metal speciation is like, let's suppose that a metal, nothing but a, a CD2 plus or zinc 2 plus goes into the water. Now, there they meet a uh, complex agent like iron oxide, magnesium oxide, or clay, or organic metal. It, it can be the case of soil also, or the sediment also. Or they meet uh, some dissolving complexes like hydroxide or carbonate and sulfate, humic acid, fulvic acid. And they make, uh, now this M plus is not as uh, the remain as a free ion. They mix the ligand and they make hydroxide, carbonate, sulfate, and like that. So how much metal is taken by what depend is going to affect the toxicity? <clears throat> because if a metal is just in form of the hydroxide, um, it is as good as a free ion, and free ion can cause and uh, knock the door of your liver and kidney and uh, damage them very uh, quickly. But if it is taken by a fulvic acid, a long chain, it means it is uh, even digestive juice perhaps will not let it release, and it will come out of your digestive system without uh, causing much toxicity. So that's how the metal speciation can affect the toxicity. And for Bengal people, uh, this is more important than uh, this uh, fish. And uh, so then fish also is acts like a biotic ligand. And you know that Minamata disease uh, happens in Japan, or uh, Itai Itai disease happen in Japan. That those were Minamata disease due to the mercury increase, uh, Itai Itai due to cadmium increase. And it happened there because they, also, they like to eat uh, raw fish in sushi and sashimi. And uh, that fish has. Uh, the accumulated uh, metals in their uh, thing. And that's why these diseases are named after the, uh, the, the Japanese uh, word. And uh, that's how it acts. <clears throat> so if somebody says, look, uh, my lake gets contaminated or river gets contaminated, it doesn't affect me. It's, fine, it's wrong because I don't take a water or I don't take uh, something. Because of course, if there is a, uh, the, if you eat some biotic ligand, it is going to happen. Now, the, another argument can be, no, I am not a non-vegetarian. I only eat veg. But I can tell you that a cabbage, uh, several uh, vegetables are already known to have accumulate the metals, and like spinach. And, uh, and if the irrigated water is such water, because uh, if from lake or river or they irrigate or the, a, any water that has the metal, it means that it will come to your food chain. So you, you cannot uh, even avoid it. No matter how, how much you clean your vegetable 
after buying it. So then uh, we have to have the third challenge is that the priority, priority to environmental toxicity over total contamination. Um, then uh, a story doesn't end there uh, because uh, the, there is also called fate. What will be the fate of those things like if they bound? So let's suppose uh, I am putting a uh, contamination that can be metal, that can be emerging contaminant or anything per se. But uh, the, here, uh, the contaminants are coming to a river. <clears throat> this river, you can uh, call it uh, any, uh, Ganga Sagar or Brahmaputra or Ganga, uh, Ganga itself, uh, whatever the river you like, you can name it. Uh, of course, this is built by me, but uh, the point is that wastewater effluent and CS overflow and runoff, uh, these are the major sources of the contamination and it will come here. Now the um, a story starts that I already told that it has the total DOM uh, characterization different. It has the metal uh, organic ligand characteristic and those things will be different. And that will determine that how, what is going to be the formed as a uh, metal ligand and how quickly or how uh, much time it will take to photodegrade or be available for the microorganism or biodegrade. So it all depends on that what kind of the, um, so this, Let's suppose that some CSO overflow doesn't bring pollution, but it, it adds different kind of uh, dissolved organic matter. And that if the, it has metal coming from the, let's, let's suppose the uh, upstream, these metals is coming and uh, some organic matter, uh, some different kind of DOM comes here. And then uh, suddenly this metal has the different uh, fate. Now it is uh, maybe it gets uh, involved with the DOM, which is very much liked by microorganisms, then it will be consumed by them. And then the eventually, so uh, the fate is uh, really going to be different depending on that, even if this is no pollution, but still there can be um, the several things. And then there will be a constant uh, sediment uh, water interaction. So the, sometimes we say that sediment acts like a sink. It means that if there is a pollution in the water, so, uh, gradually it uh, settles down and the sediments take it. But uh, once uh, sediment has uh, adsorption capacity uh, finished, then it uh, starts dissolving it. So the source, uh, the sink becomes the source. And uh, so even if there is a fresh water, but uh, so if there is a, a rainy season came and then uh, it is, it has no pollution, but the sediment already had the metal. So uh, that again, uh, it uh, starts giving through the um, water. So that's why the fate and impact changes over the time, and that is also a challenge to understand it. Then uh, it's not the story of, because we cannot forget uh, groundwater. Uh, we, this is the water which is full, uh, meeting our demand. Uh, and nowadays, it's, uh, I, I always say that groundwater is a ATM of water. Um, so ATM of water means uh, if anywhere uh, you put a hand pump and uh, you can drill it. Many, uh, many places I go to Gujarat or many field experience, Punjab or Assam or Bihar. Uh, the, uh, I went there and uh, the main common practice is that, okay, 120 feet gone. Let's go to the 200 feet. 200 feet were gone. Let's go to 300 feet. And uh, I have recently, uh, two days back, I encountered that uh, the every house has a drilling or bore well up to 1,000 feet. This is uh, incredible because the drilling, <clears throat> getting money to drill up to that is a huge, uh, mm, I mean, the cost involved, but uh, still uh, people are capable of doing that. And um, so uh, this is uh, the going to again have the problem. And uh, I have, uh, this is a, um, graphical abstract of one of our published work, which we have done on Majuli. And uh, so there we have taken the, uh, the sample from the groundwater, open wells, and also we took the uh, biological sample. And biological sample, uh, we have seen that, okay, the nail or hair or urine, how the, and uh, how it is related to the uh, groundwater and like that. So the point is that the biological samples are equally important as well. Uh, to understand the toxicity. You know that in arsenic, yeah, one of the findings is very highlighted in Bangladesh and uh, Bengal is that um, because uh, male, male goes to the another uh, city or a state for work. So they are less affected than the women and uh, old age people or children who are living on there. And then the, because of the lesser bio, uh, the um, 
metabolic rate or lesser body weight and something children seems to be more prone. And the tox there are a lot of toxicological uh, paper of arsenic and those things are there. So that is also one of the points that I would uh, wish to... Um, so these are what I covered so far is we, call, we may call it as a legacy pollutant or legacy pollution that uh, this is arsenic. Uh, sometimes people can argue that uh, these are not anthropogenic. So let's, uh, let's talk about only the anthropogenic, which has probably no natural source. And uh, so what you have seen in the first, uh, in this diagram or in this animation, that uh, this is the capsule with the, which is following uh, the anti, the, these uh, bacteria or uh, the, and the bacteria. But after some time, this bacteria has developed the resistant and now it doesn't care uh, of the uh, capsule. So that is the happening is that we are using so much, uh, what are the chemicals that comes in the emerging uh, concern is uh, fragrance, cosmetic, agribusiness, health, uh, name it. Uh, so those people, and uh, I generally say in my class, it is maybe uh, fair and lovely or fair and handsome. Uh, and I think uh, in Bengal, I, you could relate this example much better that uh, uh, mangur. Mangur has to be very black, black uh, fish and very tasty. Now I don't eat them, but uh, because uh, suddenly I started noticing that mangur is becoming fair. Maybe because the uh, fair and handsome or fair and lovely being used and then it goes to the water body and uh, now their color is getting fair. Um, so in that case, uh, the, this is also, um, you know, paracetamol. If somebody has, uh, or antibiotic, if you are taking it, it remains in our body for four to five hours. And that's why again, after, five, uh, after paracetamol, after four or five hours, we again get fever, we again take uh, paracetamol. Now, that paracetamol is uh, only metabolite partially and it goes to the wastewater uh, in the freshwater system. Now, the freshwater system has fish or aquatic uh, things. They don't have fever, but they got paracetamol. Uh, of course, this maybe sounds uh, the funny, but of course, this, these things are happening. I am just trying to make you understand that once upon after our uh, use for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, the story doesn't end there. And uh, there are several things. And uh, as a result, USA banned shrimp and prawn from China. Uh, and that is uh, the same thing is happening uh, in Thailand. In Thailand, uh, because a lot of visitors go, you cannot, uh, you can stop importing or importing, but uh, the um, many people who goes there or visit those destination countries and uh, holiday destinations, and then you find that uh, you have nothing to choose from. And those, uh, the shrimp or prawns or fish or any food material that you are consuming there are grown in very uh, polluted uh, water. And that's uh, one study has come last year from my collaborator uh, in uh, Science of Total Environment, and you, you may refer it. So uh, what I told is that there are a lot of uh, contaminants like pharmaceutical personal care products. We name all those endocrines and uh, the, those, oh, this is a big umbrella name, PPCPs. That is, uh, comes under that. Then uh, related to that, we have antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotic resistance uh, gene. Antibiotic resistance in human is a very alarming thing. I have worked uh, for the last four years on this and uh, published a number of papers uh, where what happened is that uh, if you will see that uh, the, uh, your body will stop responding to antibiotic uh, and then uh, we are in the problem. Um, this is, uh, I would not, because I, uh, I feel that my study, uh, I, my presentation is going in different uh, tasks, but of course, if you will ask, I will tell you that why I choose this virus. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, and what, why I choose these PPCPs for analysis, acetaminophen, theophylline, caffeine, crotometone, carbamazine. But uh, let me, and uh, because, uh, and I wanted to identify anthropogenic marker and this, those things. And uh, uh, in India, we don't have a lot of research on uh, these con uh, contaminants of emerging contaminants. And uh, 
then uh, the if you will see that there is a uh, the different uh, type of emerging contaminants has different concentration in drinking water ground water surface water treated water so even ground water has been reported to have such kind of emerging contaminants uh, already and uh, so i will come on this uh, you i will send the pdf or there is a youtube also you can uh, always come to this these numbers but uh, the take home message is that around 2 million people are affected from antibiotic uh, antimicrobial resistance and um, 23000 people die just in the us 193 countries sign un declaration to act uh, upon the antimicrobial uh, resistance so this is a big uh, issue <clears throat> i have uh, one friend i met and i told him that i work on antibiotic and uh, then uh, he uh, said that his daughter is not uh, got some urinary infection and uh, she is uh, just a few five year or six year old and uh, her body is not responding to any antibiotic and the point is that we don't have much antibiotic we cannot invent <coughs> antibiotic we cannot artificially make it because antibiotic is some chemical released by antibiotics to you to be used for against another so in that case that is the point and if you will see they say that by 2050 death attributes will be much much higher and uh, and in asia alone maybe 4.7 million people is likely to die um so and it is not very far uh, i can tell you because at one point of time uh, we will listen that okay 2000 or 2020 by 2020 things will be like this but uh, i am now in 2020 um so this is uh, the thing and uh, so and uh, worrying or uh, the point is that you see uh, consumption of antibiotics in india uh, from in last 15 years this is also accepted uh, paper and now it will be come out in in a week or 10 days uh, there we have uh, shown that india has shown 105 percent of the increase uh, i mean it, it the, the use get double than what was there uh, in, in global increase is only uh, around 70 percent and india's increase is much higher uh, of antibiotic uh, use consumption and <clears throat> <laughs> Most important thing is that um, this is penicillin uh, that has been invented first time. And gradually, if you will see, okay, then we found a lot of uh, the another, another, another. And the last one that we invented was lipopeptides, peptides, that is the antibiotics uh, of this class. And after that, there is no antibiotic could have been found. So last 30 years, we have not invented any, uh, or we could not... Uh, discover any other uh, antibiotic and these are the third generation antibiotics it means the life-saving antibiotics if uh, because many times like traditional antibiotics sulfonamide or penicillin and log that uh, tetracycline but if not then they say that okay this antibiotic is not working use this one uh, so this is a big great danger and uh, from 1990 these guys are having party i don't know uh, i have not seen them uh, so these are. Uh, this is also a publication uh, from our work, and uh, you can uh, see that um, there is a. Um, here we have tried to show a easy one that how it does it spread, and this published in Environmental Research, and you can uh, last year or this year, um, and then you can see that uh, you can consult. Uh, this paper and uh, there where we have shown that how pathway it can break and like that so but uh, right now i need to uh, skip because i was not sure of the number of audience or the type of audience so that's why i bring it but of course if you want i will get back to this right now uh, i like this this is uh, not my paper and this is uh, the in 2019 uh, published uh, by this uh, uh, in uh, science of total environment and they <clears throat> they said that uh, look these are the pathway and if you think that uh, it doesn't come back to you it is wrong uh, i i have told the story until the it goes to the, our food and in our biotic ligand or our fish and then it comes to our food but they said that uh, even in drinking water there will be some antibiotic resistant bacteria and uh, this is not uh, much where the drinking where the drinking water treatment is not so high in uh, in uh, in india uh, we only do chlorination and uh, do you think that how much germs are being killed and like that and it's all about genetic recombination so even if it is killed by whether it is viable not viable whether they it can cause uh, so there are several issues in here 
Um, and um, but the, this is our part of the paper that we are uh, trying to have, uh, uh, we just accepted in uh, um, Nature the Partner Journal of Clean Water. And uh, so we have uh, shown that in India, even if the ciprofloxacine and norfloxacine, uh, who which one has the much more? And these blue bars you see everywhere. Uh, they, this is the top three users, and India is really uh, doing well. I don't know. Uh, so in that case, um, and in, in, in India, in wastewater treatment plants, they, some studies, handful of studies who, which has done, they report ciprofloxacin, uh, amoxicillin, norfloxacin 40 times higher that is reported in, in uh, other parts of any globe. Um, and, uh, the, and uh, of course, but these are the study which has been done. If there is no study, we cannot say that, okay, there is no pollution in some places like that. Um, so this is the one that is uh, now talking about uh, provenance and prevalence uh, the, of emerging contaminants. Provenance means uh, source or origin. Uh, prevalence means frequency, how frequently it is uh, there. So I have brought, uh, this is uh, the, I mean, we have uh, put here, uh, I am asking my, uh, the student to submit this, uh, but uh, what we have done here is that we created a provenance like agricultural source and shown that uh, what are the key papers or uh, the, for us, which um, came up with the new finding in, in that era. And uh, what you can see that uh, the first report was in Watershed. Then uh, after uh, the, some, in 2019 itself, there is a drinking water report. Uh, there is a report in groundwater. So wh what type of water is safe? Uh, personal care products are uh, available in uh, the stream in China, in, in Zambia, in Equatoria, Sri Lanka, so everywhere. And uh, the, the same thing is here uh, that in antibiotics, if you will see, uh, the ranges are going very, very up. China, 508 nanogram per liter. <clears throat> um, in Beijing, 16,800 uh, nanogram per liter. So it, it should not be measured in nanogram anymore. And uh, so this is the uh, thing that is uh, there. And Northeast India vulnerability, I will just talk a little bit. And uh, then because I have now less time. So this is, uh, we have seen that seafood impart, uh, PPCPs, surface water imparts, PPCPs and uh, like that. So this is uh, the, a kind of, the, we have surveyed nine, some paper in happening in 2019 and try to understand that uh, where it goes. So right now I am going to tell you about the story of this Brahmaputra River, a very huge and uh, a, we, many people say it, it is a fresh water sea. So we have, uh, this is Guwahati. Uh, so this is a uh, Guwahati urban area. And uh, the, this is we took, take the, we took from upstream, then from the urban street, and then also the downstream. And we also corrected from lake. So just one or two things I will uh, tell you uh, that, okay, the, this is, image is not coming uh, nicely uh, because uh, I don't know. But we, what we have found is that uh, the wastewater, everywhere the wastewater has acetaminophen and the E. coli and the viruses and like that. And you know, this, this paper has been published in 2019. And uh, so it's not that uh, we have, uh, so what uh, in science of total environment, uh, so that this summary, and what summary was that there is a huge, this is the urban drain, lot of uh, contaminants coming uh, from the, once upon a time, it was a very nice, clean stream passing through the uh, Guwahati city. But, uh, then they had the, this become a drain, open drain, open channel drain, unlined, so it will keep on supplying or infiltrating into the groundwater, and then it comes and dump the, all those caffeine, and you can see the caffeine, PMO, the, this all virus, and PPCP they bring. They, we could not find any E. coli here. We found a little bit here, then we found very high, and then by the time it passes this river 10 kilometer, this river is capable of diluting them all. So then uh, it means the, so the river is a kind of saving grace. And sometimes it's like people say that uh, dilution is the solution of pollution. Uh, so sometimes here the solution is just a dilution, that uh, uh, the whole entire pollution of the entire city is being diluted by a poor but almighty river. 
uh, the Almighty, not so mighty, uh, river given by the Almighty. And then uh, some, if there is a, some drain, dam is being constructed in China or something, of course, those are the issues, uh, other thing I don't want to go there. Um, so then uh, what we have uh, seen here is that uh, you can see, um, and we have uh, done liver fluxacin, ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, kenamycin, estepto. Uh, my sin uh, tetracycline. So these are uh, that we have found that in river, how much uh, this is a river. We compared it with the uh, Sri Lanka and Sabarmati. Um, so even in Sabarmati, we had uh, got uh, the um, uh, these uh, anti uh, the antibiotics and uh, like that. And uh, then we have compared with uh, many uh, rivers and uh, uh, in uh, the other country, and we have seen. It's not that only in India there is a uh, pollution, but Brazil has this 28,000 and India has 22,733 uh, in, in terms of the caffeine and like that. So anyway, you can uh, study uh, or check those papers. I am just trying to get uh, or uh, excite your interest and let you know that, okay, the, what uh, may be more exciting for you to do research or uh, read about. Um, so we have uh, done a lot of gene. We have uh, extracted uh, antibiotic resistant gene, which uh, is the presence of this gene, like uh, Belatem, uh, or uh, um, if there is a, a AMPC gene present in a microbes or in a bacteria, that means that bacteria has to be AMP cell in uh, resistant. Um, so then uh, this is tetracycline. Uh, you see, see the tet tet uh, everywhere there is a tetracycline. Almost now. Uh, the all the river has tetra of the microbes present tetracycline resistant so then already those microbes are got the um, first generation resistance for the first generation uh, antibiotics then we keep on publishing that uh, the like uh, that it is not that uh, this is this paper is also published in environmental research maybe this year and uh, what we have uh, shown is that uh, it's not a finding that Treatment plant is a solution of everything. Um, uh, so sometimes uh, the even uh, in the effluent, uh, the number of microbes in decreases, but the antibiotic resistance percentage has increased. That is a very very uh, unusual finding and reported uh, to by us, and uh, people can uh, and it has created a splash among the workers in this field. We also uh, try to. Uh, calculate uh, the risk uh, quotient for Daphnia, Magna, Fields, and Algae, because it will be unfair to talk about only thing. And this is published in Science of Total Environment. You can also check. There is a simple formula. If you know the concentration, you can uh, know the risk uh, quotient. Um, now, this is the another work, not mine, but on the Ganga. Of course, now my uh, some sample we are analyzing of the Ganga, but uh, because uh, I believe in working nearby, like uh, think globally, but work locally. So when I was in Assam, I was working on Brahmaputra or Jipur Bill. I, when I came to Gujarat, I was working on Savarmati. I never been near to uh, Ganga, uh, but uh, that is, uh, we are now, I took some samples and they also reported something, something like that. And uh, Ganga water, of course, uh, is neither not an exception, but uh, this water is being uh, used for irrigation or it reach, it reach, its reach is huge to the population thickness in terms of the population thickness, if, we, if I say. Okay, so and uh, at present we are such a uh, capable country, but uh, the, as far as these antibiotic or PPCP studies concerned, we don't have much study available on that. And uh, yeah, my group is one of the, the leading group, I think, uh, on these uh, issues. Um, then we also went ahead with the microplastic and uh, we thought that, okay, um, what is happening? And uh, actually, the what happened is that uh, I started with understanding groundwater uh, geological process. How, uh, why there is a high calcium or low sodium in the water? My beginning was like that. My humble beginning at JNU was like that. And when I was understanding high calcium, low sodium, and chloride uh, nature, and try to understand geochemical weathering and like that. Then I move on, and then I found that okay, metal is a big problem. Then we gradually moved, 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 
people maybe I don't remember that and people say that oh you venture in different no I am working on fresh water and trying to understand the contaminant transport and like that and what we I felt is that these are very very essential now if there is a um, and what can cause uh, immediate impact an immediate impact microplastic unseen you cannot uh, remove uh, because if we do RO basis and all that stuff, its size is really, really too small and it has the adsorption fraction. Even a coat, if I do uh, the jacket wash, uh, this jacket wash can, uh, washing the cloth produces 110 tons of the microplastic in the ocean. So from a washing machine, from uh, so it means uh, the, then I realized that okay this is one of the thing we have analyzed Savarmati, Chandola Lake and this one and we have found and reported now um, one paper I published this year about the relationship of antibiotic microplastic and antibiotic resistance. Then that is a the entirely new paper. Nobody has even tried to have a, a uh, correlation uh, studies because their source are different. Their Everything is different, but uh, I had a different argument that no, uh, please have a see because uh, uh, some um, what uh, to pinpoint that what kind of the activity is leading to. And if all the time, if we just say industries, even it's not going to solve. Many people just explain things like, oh, this is attributed to anthropogenic activities. And that is they publish it. Um, uh, I mean, it's time to go more, be, more. Uh, because of our analytical capacity has uh, increased uh, uh, several, several times. My time is up, but uh, I would take a little bit, uh, um, I mean, liberty here, uh, owing to the less, uh, the, I mean, um, but uh, in, I will, I'll try to finish in five to six minutes. Uh, if Sumit, is, if it is fine. Otherwise, I will just end it here. Because, yeah, yeah, uh, sure, you go ahead. Because uh, my the, the metal antibiotic and uh, this microplastic story has ended. Now, whatever uh, I thought that uh, the story will be not completed after uh, without Sundays, and similarly, so I bring you sweet item of COVID also because uh, the, it would be it would be unfair if I don't tell you about something on the COVID. So after this microplastic, there is little bit segment on that, and then I will end it. So this is uh, the microplastic uh, pollution Savarmati uh, has been, and uh, when it was found in uh, Gujarat, I have, sometimes I say that this is a, um, when I found it in uh, Brahmaputra, no study, no report, nobody is willing to publish it. But uh, if it is in Savarmati, uh, I can see the, where uh, uh, people and everything, there was like sun's river needs Satyagra against Superbug, and then, uh, I came to know that AMC has given a lot at 500 uh, lakh or 500 crore, I don't know, uh, certain uh, money to cleaning the river and all that stuff. Uh, these all uh, studies were reported based on our uh, work. Um, those, and you can see that they say that uh, the superbug and microplastic, uh, they covered heavy metal. So, uh, Savarmati heavy metal soon hit your plate or uh, invisible microplastic polluting the Savarmati. And uh, so those things are seabed sinks and like that. So those things are there. Superbug um, is also there. Um, now, um, so this is the PCPs, and I try to touch upon. Uh, of course, each topic can, uh, the, and this is a kind of gist of the 10 papers at least. But uh, now let me go to the COVID one. Um, so then uh, the, in COVID, uh, I would not go because they have very limited time. I would just tell you about uh, the something is that, uh, the, you know, um, uh, what is uh, the, this? You can see that bird flu, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is a genetic virus. Genetic virus is a virus which is uh, produced by the combination of uh, animal virus and human virus. Or uh, because uh, not, uh, I mean, the which can, which has capability to infect uh, human virus. Not all animal virus can, uh, not all can affect. No, it cannot directly affect. If I eat a bird uh, which has a virus uh, causing uh, flu in the, that bird, it will not cause me. But if there is a, some intermediate alteration, then it can cause, and this is called genetic virus. And in SARS-CoV-2, uh, it seems like uh, bat is the original source, and then pangolin is the where is the uh, modification happens and it affects the uh, human. I will just take a slight uh, the time that to understand that 
on basis of what we determine that a viral disease is uh, dangerous. We determined based on uh, the contagious nature, how much contagious it is and how much deadly it is. So then uh, either, uh, so like uh, pneumonia plague, this is very much, uh, if you got it, you gone. You are gone, it is very deadly. Uh, but cholera or measles, it has uh, very contagious, it very uh, spread very fast, but it doesn't kill much. Um, now, which one do you want to have? Actually, I know none of them. Uh, but the point is that uh, which one you will call that this is a dangerous uh, disease because uh, HIV is here, Ebola is here, bird flu is here. Um, it is there. But what makes COVID unique is, and wh where do you think COVID will be? If I will ask you to guess, probably none of you will be guessing it right because COVID is here, very low. So then uh, COVID is here where they have, uh, you can see green or whatever you say. So it is neither very contagious nor very deadly. But that is that acts uh, in favor of uh, this COVID because uh, the many people doesn't know that they got it and they start spreading the, um, and they act like a uh, agent of a spreading. Um, and that is why, and uh, other diseases, while you got a cholera, you will be bedridden. COVID-19 patient doesn't get the bedridden until very later stage. And that is why it makes it express and it becomes a pandemic. And uh, the, I hope that you understood the uh, point that I am trying to make. And uh, don't get confused with the name. SARS-CoV-2 is the name. And it's not like that coronavirus happened in 2019 only. This coronavirus has the seven members already. And uh, uh, this seventh member has been, uh, it was also there, only human has identified in 2019. And COVID is C-O-V-I-D and 19 is the disease name. It is not a virus name. Corona is a family name, not a virus name. And you know that SARS-CoV-2, uh, it is found in pangolin and bait, and this is just single extended RNA. If you will see HIV, influenza, hepatitis, Ebola, Zika, all are, uh, except herpes virus, all are single extended RNA. So you can sometimes in the exam, if there will be a question that hepatitis A virus is single extended, double, uh, single extended DNA, double extended DNA, single extended RNA, double extended RNA, you can take uh, the, your chances uh, by taking single extended RNA. So hepatitis, Ebola, Zika, Zika, HIV, influenza, these all are single extended RNA, which can be the most tiniest possible thing uh, that is we are talking about. And it's not that the COVID is the only thing. Uh, we had the SARS and uh, um, these, these viruses were there. I have no time, uh, so I will go faster. I have published this uh, uh, in my itself. These are one of the very initial review that comes in the science of proton environment and quality review. Not that uh, it's just because of, if you will read, you will understand, because I told myself that uh, uh, first I need to understand, even if I am a water scientist, I need to understand its epidemiology diagnosis or prognosis, uh, how it will be transmit or trans uh, treatment. And then we uh, published this work uh, very early. And there I wrote that, uh, you know, uh, even by blood test, you can know just a simple a neutrophil by lymphocyte, which is just a uh, total differential count, uh, count of the blood. You can know that whether you have the COVID-19 or not. And uh, we, uh, this is the one that we, uh, this is the diagram from that uh, paper where we try to make the loop. I have no time, so I'm sorry, I need to get out. Uh, this one has uh, just published, uh, came online uh, two, three days back. And here we have given our uh, very, very, uh, the uh, a kind of integrated uh, uh, circuit or uh, cycle of this uh, uh, virus uh, movement. And uh, you know that here, the, if you understand this diagram, you can understand the hydrological uh, pathways in the uh, city or in any urban area. And here we have given septic tank, virus in the hospital, virus in uh, evapotranspiration and log that dumping site. And we, we have uh, even from the, a patient being buried, uh, there may be some water uh, virus is coming. So we have given a kind of uh, pathways. And maybe down the lane after 10 years, it, it can be a part of a textbook where they will say this is Kumar pathway or something like that. Um, yeah, that, okay, the Kumar Ital has given this pathway on this uh, virus. 
Uh, and we, what we try to do is that we just try to add on component and try to understand that whether the, this component is likely to contribute or not. Um, so that is the uh, one thing that we have. This is the, and suddenly people start saying that, oh, Manish Kumar, you were working on arsenic or metal, how you become the expert of uh, virus? Uh, it's not like uh, I was waiting for COVID. Uh, this is the, I already published uh, this virus work in 2019, July, uh, August. And so there we already did. And you know, this norovirus are the, um, the viruses which are uh, uh, like enveloped and enveloped, you, you know. So these are the same thing. We, I already explained. I wrote a very early uh, discussion on the COVID about the most awaited summer. And people were talking, oh, why he is uh, talking about that? Because I already had data that in when I did a sampling in uh, summer uh, 2017 and winter, and we, I found that in winter there is a virus. There is no virus in uh, uh, river or lake in um, Guwahati. And they are the same uh, enveloped virus uh, like that. So then we, uh, then I wrote it that okay, the other behave, other virus behave like that way. So likely SARS CoV two is also going to behave that way. Anyway, uh, the to cut the story short is that coronavirus was not every, everywhere. Uh, it is not a case of now. This uh, study of environmental science and technology, they have ex scanned it and found it uh, in 2012, uh, December, that there is a corona family viruses or respiratory viruses are getting more and more prevalent in the uh, wastewater. And uh, so, and then uh, there is a lot of a study happened after that. And uh, then uh, we thought that, okay, let's have the wastewater based epidemiology. And uh, if Sumit wants, he can also join this group and uh, or anybody from uh, the uh, there and this is also it it will come online maybe in a day or five days uh, time already accepted and here we have told that why uh, the wastewater surveillance is helpful than the clinical surveillance because uh, the clinic uh, even if uh, somebody comes in my family and take only my blood i can be only sure about myself that whether i got this or not but if they, somebody comes and take from uh, IIT wastewater treatment plant and I live in the campus, we will be knowing that if the end that wastewater brings negative, so then I can be at least assured. If it comes positive, I am not sure whether I am positive or not. But uh, if it is negative and I know that my waste also goes there, I, I can be assured about the community. So then community surveillance is much more important than this one. But, uh, uh, and uh, so this one I would like to little bit escape because it is uh, helpful. And what we can do is that this diagram is very my favorite one, although not from my paper. Uh, this red one, they, is the, they detected this uh, based on uh, wastewater. So they, norovirus, they also analyzed norovirus G2. I also analyzed in uh, Guwahati. And here what they have done is that these black dots are number of percent coming to the nearby hospital. And this is the red one are the this one uh, in, in wastewater. What they found is that the peak of percent was two weeks after the peak noticed in the wastewater. So what is uh, the finding is that we got uh, two days, two weeks time in advance, uh, in advance which means uh, we have the two weeks to prepare and uh, for any worse situation or uh, like that. So it can give you the early warning. And I think uh, with this warning that it can, it is capable of this one, I would like to uh, end it because I have no time to explain my, my finding. But uh, of course we have done on uh, in uh, Ahmedabad and we published in Science of Total Environment and we found that uh, it can correlate. And uh, <clears throat> this morning when I was preparing this, <clears throat> um, I mean the giving the final thought, I got a revision option from Science of Total Environment where uh, we, uh, what happened is that, you know, research ideas, you read other paper, I have uh, other paper and uh, keep your eyes open, even that author may missed their result, but uh, you may find it. I, this is a paper uh, published by somebody else and I saw that, oh, in China, in before treatment, there was no, no detection, but after treatment, there was a detection. So I did my research and I did the uh, entire one and I was submitted and uh, today it came for revision. And this is the one we found. And this is the under review and uh, which came for revision this morning. Uh, where we have taken, <clears throat> I went ahead and I took the sample from preliminary treatment, USB and then USB outlet, aeration tank, clarifier, effluent, 
and uh, we we have found that there is no no but it, it suddenly appeared then again it is no it it was there it was there not there not there not there so it is not so easy to say that okay the this uh, genes goes on we are working on infectivity this is under review um the, we are working on i i also uh, people are thinking about this is a viewpoint uh, they think that uh, if there will be a paper device like ph paper and if we just dip in the wastewater and we can know uh, what is happening there will be better but uh, i don't know um, and this one is the paper published by us uh, where we have uh, i have told that uh, what if if we are going to uh, we are using lot of antiviral drug it will be not metabolite it will again go to the treatment plant in india there is no treatment plan then um, i mean the very very less and then it will go to the again brahmaputra river now brahmaputra river takes it into the forest they in the forest there is a bat <clears throat> there is a pangolin there is a okay pangolin i am not sure but there will be uh, and then uh, there is a virus in their gut now they are taking water from this and constantly whether that virus will uh, uh, will develop the resistance or not and then if that virus again comes to uh, town and cause the covid whether that time this uh, our medicine will work or not <clears throat> now what is here here is just merging my experience of antibiotic resistance with this antiviral aspect and with logically and it published in environmental science and technology so it doesn't need uh, you need to so the different lessons or experience i added for uh, this one and uh, this uh, viewpoint they oh yeah it is quite uh, fine we can publish it and so this is this has been published in environmental science and technology um and i would just encourage you all that uh, do that kind of thinking and those things and you will have this one okay this is the, so the just sum up uh, the this challenges s7 o i am saying because uh, 47 we are already crossed 70 years uh, of uh, more than that uh, so there there is a um, after our independence so we have the toxicological aspect fast detection finding remo not nemo finding remo is like uh, remediation technology we have to have awareness we have to have transboundary we have to have monitoring and prediction however we cannot forget about quality guidelines so this these are the things we can do i would just skip this uh, because i thought i will uh, 45 minutes is too much this is very nice slogan i always love to uh, tell that for all for all that this is if you want to remember please manage all of your rain water at all the methods from all places by all people so one all two all three all and four all so this is for all for all um, can be the mantra okay with this uh, these are the some uh, references you may like to refer with this i would like to thank you for this opportunity uh thank you dr manish kumar for a such a nice uh, talk about and these these problems are very pertinent to the present situation so we, we mankind need to be uh, very much cautious about using the antibiotics and uh, pesticides more so before going to the question and answer session i have some uh, questions to you so what is your opinion that uh, how much depth this antibiotic residue can be found in uh, river bed uh can you repeat this question again uh, yeah i want to know that how much depth of the occurrence of these antibiotic residues in uh, groundwater as well as in the river bed yeah interesting question because uh depth profiling i have not done because uh, <clears throat> um of course i know about the groundwater that groundwater uh, needs to have uh, like uh, only shallow groundwater has reported the ppcps but um, um uh, but river one i i have no idea it it can be a good uh, research question for me um but uh, i have not done because uh, the of course we think like okay the uh, with a given river flow the mixing is well uh, in surface water so that is why but uh, yeah um uh, but the groundwater is only affected until shallow um and of course because of the cost involved in the analysis of ppcps we are uh, not able to analyze too many and cost and also the processing and the something so i need to have a kind of big uh, money project uh, so that we can do it 
So, uh, okay, thank you very much. So I have another doubt. So, what is your opinion about the indiscriminate use of the pesticides in agriculture? Because uh, in India, so we are only thinking about the how to increase the agriculture without thinking about the environment. So, what 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 is your opinion? I I, I think you must have worked on pesticides also. Um, actually, the yeah we have a scan recently i have a scan about uh, the pesticides and actually the what the question that you are asking is related to food water energy nexus and uh, so it's not so easy to say that okay stop using pharmaceutical many time i say that uh, the ddt like uh, i always give the example of ddt ddt was invented to protect um ourselves from uh, i mean the human being from malaria and at that time that was the need and that was the need and uh, but then a ddt becomes bioaccumulative and it is causing another health hazard so the human evolution has been such that we solve our problem at hand and then uh, create another problem and then solve it later um and that is the way <clears throat> way of progression so, of course, uh, I cannot say that uh, the agriculture needs to be stopped. How much legitimacy is there? Because if, if I, have, I will be given an option whether you want to die from hunger or from arsenic or from metal or from PPCPs, bioaccumulation, and choose one, of course, I am not going to choose hunger. So, uh, many times I say that if uh, I ask my students whether you would like to die from uh, malaria or from arsenic and people they say that uh, i don't want to die of course but i don't give them that option and then they say that um, because malaria can kill you in seven days eight days if you don't treat uh, it but uh, arsenic will take years um, so then uh, those things are there so i would just say is that uh, this is an excess problem and we need to uh, we don't have but at least uh, my take is that assessment is the first step of management if we know uh, how much is detected and where is what, we can manage it. That is the first step. So the monitoring and assessment is the first step, and then we can go. But if we neglect, we are not including even, we are not noticing even, we are not agreeing there is a problem, then there is a problem. So thank you again from my side, Dr. Manish Kumar, for accepting this uh, invitation. And uh, the audience, uh, I want to say that uh, this group is uh, doing terrific work and I think uh, in 2020 your group has published nearly 48 publications as far as I know, oh maybe, <laughs> maybe more. Uh, no, so, no, you have counted? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. and uh, all are in good journals like uh, Journal of Environmental Management, Current Pollution Report, Environmental Research, Journal of Hazardous Materials and uh, Science of the Total Environment. So these, these journals are one of the prestigious journals in this uh, water or ecology or environmental science team. So I much congratulate you and your team for your hard work. And uh, uh, I think in 2020, still six months are there more. So more, more <laughs> total <will be> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> under the pipelines. So uh, no, uh, all I'm the best. Uh, yeah, all no, the best. I only for... want to do uh, Durga Puja and Diwali and. Uh, so I would take a question um, that is... Yeah, uh, now, now I will uh, transfer to Shomik and uh, he will uh, take care of that session. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sunil. Okay, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Manish Kumar, for giving such an interesting and excellent coverage on prevalence of antibiotic resistance, viruses, metals, pharmaceuticals, personal care products in India, and emerging challenges for aquatic ecosystems. I must also min mention that he has emphasized some major problems such as water pollution, antibiotic resistance, bacteria, etc., which we may not are giving this, such importance which we should be given. So we are ignoring the facts that we are having such problems, but this is an emerging problem and we must give so much attention to this because it will, uh, otherwise our future will be in danger. It is so fascinating how Dr. Kumar delivered the topic in such a lucid and exciting way and highlighted our knowledge. So now we can move on to our question and answer session. So we have picked some questions from our live chat, which are as the following. So the first question is from Momita Bhumi. She asked, how to come out of water crisis in future and what are the future plans that can be incorporated? 
Okay. Um, so again, uh, I would say that I have one slide actually on that, but uh, the we need to have understand or ask uh, individual um, think and only do is that uh, the we all should be doing about ab adopting an approach of minimalist. Uh, that uh, we need to try to decrease our need and we try to s understand that we can live with four pairs of uh, clothes and we can change them every four years and uh, uh, each uh, like i told you that even washing contributes a lot of uh, microplastic so if i will ha i will buy and one t-shirt is out of uh, thousand liters one shoes is like more than eight to the two to uh, 20,000 leather shoes, uh, liter or something like that, because it accounts for animal growth and then the water gone into their life and uh, processing and everything. So even a cheap packet is a uh, lot of. So then whenever you eat or you consume or you buy, think the water print behind that uh, your activity. And uh, of course, on the national level, we need to go because the 85 percent of the Indian water or fresh water is being used for agriculture. And that's what Sumit has already asked uh, on that. And I already told you that this is an excess problem. However, what I didn't tell there is that uh, we have to have a uh, mode of change of uh, irrigation. We even if no, no political party wants to touch uh, farmers, they want to give them subsidy. They want to enable them by electricity that pump it as much as you want. No, sorry, sir. But even if they grow uh, food for us, uh, we need to uh, protect the water, whether what kind of quality, what quality of the water they need uh, for uh, irrigation. So there are several questions. I do not have, uh, I am not Harry Potter, so I don't have any uh, magic wand. But uh, what I can say is that, uh, yeah, this, if we adopt and uh, rainwater harvesting, rainwater harvesting can help anyway. I teach my students about, even if your house is a small, uh, there is a roof and you can multiply with the rainy, uh, how much rain happens in a year and you can know that how much tank of the water you can save. Um, but, uh, or you can use, you know that this water cycle act on that a fresh water comes, water cycle or our use is the story of a drop that comes in form of rain and meets the ocean. In between, there is, that is the love story of that water that uh, we all uh, enjoy and we meet our need. But uh, the, if that one we slow down, if that one we use judiciously, if that one we use several times, one of my studies this year I published, people only see publication, uh, at least Sumit uh, admired that, but many people are not even admiring. They think, ah, this is impossible. But yeah, it is possible because uh, the it's only thing is that COVID gave me time to finish my papers. Otherwise, many papers were four years, five years uh, uh, lying with me. So in that case, uh, um, so then uh, what happened is that uh, I wrote a paper about uh, if, how about recycling a kitchen waste, no need to treat it, uh, the treat this one. And the, uh, I did a study in Gandhinagar and Ahmedabad, I proved it. First, I generated a concept that how about, I, I am not a big fan of mixing 50 gram of seed with 500 liter of my house waste. It will be a 500 uh, and then clean it and say, please recycle it. No, I was thinking about, okay, I will not use this, this one, but only kitchen waste or only uh, can go to the gardening because it has only nutrient. It doesn't have much. Uh, it has oil, it has food particle, it can go to the irrigation uh, for gardening, if any way I am doing. And if not, but at least my shower, my shower where I use shampoo, uh, L'Oreal shampoo and uh, something like that, it doesn't have anything but just a soap. It can go to the, uh, my uh, flush water and uh, it will be good for uh, disinfection also because at the end of the day, the soap is also a disinfectant. So in that case, we, if I root it, uh, to my flush, then the same water I can use two times. And uh, so I have to increase now. Then question came to me that uh, how about pumping? Uh, the, so then I thought that, okay, how about a, uh, a multi high rise building? So the uh, top floor sour water comes to the uh, flushing water of the second floor, uh, 
the like fifth floor, fifth floors, fourth floors, and like that. Then I thought that okay, the all the four or six floor people went to holiday or uh, Durga Puja to Kolkata. Now the fifth people have no much water for uh, flushing. So then I thought, okay, how about three floor gives to the another three floor and three floor another give three floors. So uh, this kind of concept I wrote and it was published in Journal of Environmental Management. And now the, the real data paper is under review in Science of Total Environment. Um, and uh, so there are several things I can keep on. I am passionate about this research and I can tell you about those. Now people can think that I am a chemistry guy. Why I am talking about this because of such questions. Because when I talk the problem, I used to go to the field and people say, uh, so sir, what should I do? I was doing arsenic work and then I realized I am, uh, then I started doing uh, some remediation work and then now I have a patent and uh, like uh, some patents filed. And uh, so this is, uh, that's how the a researcher progress, I guess, or becomes old. Thank you. Uh, so there is another question, which is from Priya Ghoshal. She asked, what is your opinion regarding the effect of bioaccumulation of personal care products on fishes that you have mentioned earlier? Opinion I have already told. This is bad. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I understood the question because I told the metal accumulation, but I have not told the PPCPs. Uh, um, scientifically or technically, I should not be saying it uh, right now because I do not remember uh, that ampicillin, nine, nine microgram or nanogram of ampicillin in the water becomes 10 micro nanogram or 18 nanogram in a, a small fish and then bigger fish has more more i have not done this study and right now i do not recall any such study so i'm not sure about that that uh, the is there uh, such kind of bioaccumulation happens in the fish um but uh, yeah it seems to me likely but i need to check it out so at present i would just say that uh, uh, yeah, I already said uh, that this is uh, likely, but I am not sure whether such accumulation happens in terms of there. Uh, but what is happening is that they are already infecting at the genetic level. They are infecting uh, the genes and uh, resistance ability. So already they are reactive material, perhaps. That's why they are producing such results, and such results are more obvious. Bioaccumulation one, I would see. Uh, they are already causing toxicity that has been reported. Yeah. There, uh, so Bhaskar asked, what is the impact of antibiotics on the species, those who live in Ganga river? Uh, this is, uh, I mean, I have done three, generally we choose, there is a, some protocol developed, uh, like Diphnia for Magna, there are some species uh, based on which their toxicological studies has been done. So we have done on algae. We have done on Daphnia and some of the studies, uh, but I am not sure about all the species in Ganga and I cannot say something like what is happening with the Rohu or uh, the uh, or Elis, but uh, I can only say that um, yeah, there, there must be uh, a lot of impact because quantity, there is a direct relation between concentration and toxicity. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Divisha Biswas asked, face masks are now being used widely around the globe due to COVID-19 pandemic. Can these masks be a source of microplastic pollution? If so, then is there any solution to mitigate this problem? Wow, you gave me uh, one idea. Okay, now uh, you can become co-author with me on this uh, because we can write a, uh, we can write a, um, how to say, um, yeah, one viewpoint that this is a uh, microplastic source mask. Mask is coming as a microplastic source. <laughs> yeah, I, I get, uh, that's why I come for webinars because there is a lot of press ideas. But uh, the, yeah, I think this is a very logical point. Uh, however, I do not have any solution right now because uh, I need to define the problem first. I need to understand that how big that problem will be uh and uh yeah and this is the open because if i took uh this uh, leaf of advice from here the visa you can uh, write me email because i am not going to stop here i will try to build up on this maybe subit can also be part of it but uh, 
this is very likely i guess yeah dr manish uh, just uh, last month i think in nature one uh, article came about this uh, problem and uh, they have pulled uh, mostly from the chinese uh, waters and they, this, this problem has been addressed uh, and it may not be the mitigate, mitigation for aspect they have touched however the problems they have shown in the proper database uh, so, so it is Indians, already no 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 so uh, but if we talk about hyper uh, idea basis then it is not of india or chinese origin but uh, the point is that if i need to do some study then that is a different thing and it will take time and money and everything yeah yeah uh, but uh, i was thinking about a viewpoint and i was thinking about a discussion if they have already published please send me that paper yeah, so sure, that sure. i can i can see that what are the aspect they have seen otherwise yeah, sure. um, yeah and then i may comment that whether there is anything left for them to highlight there is one last question that is from Mohammed Fahim. Is there any relation between flood and increasing metal toxicity in river? Between food and increasing metal toxicity, food means what? In what sense? No, uh, no I mean, uh, uh, he asked flood and flood. metal toxicity. Flood. Ah, now it's lunch time, getting lunch time. I am getting food. <laughs> Actually, I, I do these things to, uh, of course, uh, um, so then what is happening is that uh, I mean, uh, definitely the flood is going to affect the metal toxicity, but I would not say in increasing or decreasing because uh, there is like a flood uh, dilutes also uh, the metal concentration, but it also brings, uh, introduces new type of organic matter into the system. Then it also brings a lot of like, there is a solid waste dumping site, and then there is a flood, or then is a rain. There is a industrial, or some scraps are written. So then uh, it brings a lot of uh, metals into the system. Uh, so, but it also brings a lot of organic matter. It also it brings water into them, which can be diluting it. So I would not say toxicity part. Uh, definitely that because toxicity depends on. Uh, how much metals are free and uh, if flood is likely to bring a lot of sediment into the river, a lot of organic matter to, into the river and also metals. So it means uh, this is, can be a good point that before and after the flood uh, a river has to be estimated but then that water doesn't remain there. It goes to the this one so we cannot do uh this but as far as my uh, that's why i am saying that the lot of things is still unknown and uh, but this is one of the point uh, as far as if i have to choose an answer i would say that probably the flood would likely to decrease uh, the this one because they will introduce a lot of organic matter and organic matter will settle the free decrease the free metal ions so it then eventually it should decrease toxicity. But it depends on that if how much new metals are being added also. So I hope we got his answer. So that's all for today. Uh, questions. So, dear participants, please keep in mind that these sessions will also be available on YouTube channel too. So, so it is already uh, recorded. Uh, yeah, it's okay. or, uh, also. And recorded. I hope that I will have the copyright too to put on my. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. we'll send you the. Okay. So okay. Now we have come to an end. So I, on behalf of the Ecology Laboratory, express our sincere thanks to our honourable delegate. Dr. Manish Kumar, who has taken uh, out valuable time from his busy, busy schedule and enlightened us with his knowledge. <laughs> Finally, I extend my big thanks to our main ecology laboratory members who worked really hard to make this successful. Thanks to all the audiences who have made this program successful with their presence and cooperation. Thank you. Have a good day. And thank you, sir. Very much. Okay, so the, just uh, one more time, I would like to thank you, uh, Somik and uh, Sumit, uh, because I was really, really not doing any webinar. I told that I go very often and I gave a little bit hard time to Sumit to convince me. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's fine, always uh, fascinating to interact with uh, uh, young minds and that too, if they are from Bengal, uh, because they are the most intellectual people. So I had a good time and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, for this talk.